This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. When we're talking about brushes, we're not just talking about the paintbrush. I think we've probably covered that one enough right here, the paintbrush tool. What we want to talk about next is the color replacement tool. Now, the color replacement tool is not new, but it's a neat tool to work with. Now, it has options. Number one, it has, of course, a brush size. We have an 80 pixel brush right now. I can use my right or left bracket keys to make that bigger or smaller. You do have a couple of modes. The blending modes will blend the color. Now, this is very similar to a technique I talked about in an earlier chapter about colorizing something. If you want to change the color of something, then you want to leave the blending mode at color. Now you have three options here. You have sampling options. I look at this tool as a combination of a painting tool and a magic wand. The magic wand selects areas based on where you click and it expands or contracts the selection based on your tolerance number over here. So we have a sample continuously, sample only once, and a sample using the background color. Now you also have limits on contiguous, discontiguous, I always say non-contiguous, so I must be getting that wrong. Contiguous, discontiguous, and find edges. Contiguous means within a certain area. Discontiguous means just about anywhere you find the color. And find edges sometimes can help you find that edge. In most cases, we're probably going to be safer on contiguous right here. Tolerance is very important because it controls how much of an area based on where you select. So let's start by choosing a color we want to change this really nice bird to. This was taken somewhere, I think, in Maine, if I'm not mistaken. And the bird was kind of on one of these posts out by the water. And uh, I think that's a cardinal, but I'm not a bird person, so I wouldn't be sure. Let me go over here and pick up a color. I want to change him to more of a cyan color. How about that? With that done, we are sampling continuously with the tolerance of 30. So I'm going to come over here. Now here's the thing to remember when you're sampling continuously. See the little plus sign on the brush? Do not let that plus sign get into any other area except the color you want to change. In other words, leave the plus sign in the red. Do not take it outside or it will go out there and begin painting for you. So what we're doing is we're being very careful about this. Now I'm using a drawing tablet, mouse, it really doesn't matter with what we're doing. But what we're doing here is we're just making sure that the plus sign stays inside of the area that you want to change that red color. Let's go around that fence post right there. And notice we come down here. Let's make sure we get all this stuff too and down into there let's go ahead and get the tail just keep it inside of the tail and you should be actually pretty good here good to go as they say now let's come back up here see if we can get a little bit more of that i don't like that headpiece on the bird let's go this way Okay. Now you'll notice I got a little piece more than what I wanted to on the fence. And that little tiny piece right there, I suppose I could go back and undo that. But this piece right here we can fix very quickly if we pick up our history brush and use a nice small brush. Remember, we're painting back what used to be there. So if you want to change the bird from a Red to a cyan, I suppose this would be one way to do it. What's left up here? Let's go back to the magic of our history and go back to the original. Now, in this case, let's try something different. We'll select the brush again. We'll change this time to a single selection. This allows us one click. As long as we're holding the mouse down, the sample remains the same. It's not continuous. So let's get about here and click. Now begin moving around. Now it does stop, doesn't it? But notice the areas it's not getting. 
Well, our sample was based on that first click. I can go as fast as I want to. I don't have to worry about going over with the plus sign. It's only going to get that area. But as much as I drag over these areas, it's not going to do anything because the sample was set by where I clicked. If I let go of the mouse, come over here and click again here, it gives me another chance for a second sample. And if I come down here, you get the idea. So this might be another way that you can get the job done, but you're going to have to stop and select and click over and over again. But it does work. It does work. It is getting it done. You just have to kind of keep an eye on what you're doing. Let's stop and go ahead and go back up to history and turn it back into the original. The third way is by the background color. Now, this is similar to a single click, but this will get us into tolerance too. Pick up your eyedropper. Come into the image somewhere where you think the main color is you want to change. Hold the Alt key down and click. Now, watch what happens actually to my background color here when I do that. If I do it just like that and hold the Alt key down, that becomes the background color. This option, when we go back to the tool, is use that as my sample. So if I come over here again, it doesn't matter where I start. I can come up here, do everything I want to. The only areas it's going to change are based on that sample. So I can be pretty cavalier about changing this thing. It doesn't matter. But I'm still running into the problem of the range of where it selects. And that's not working. Now, I can keep pressing and moving and pressing and moving. It's not going to do anything because it's set by the color down here. So we might try something here. We might go back to that tool, make sure you've got it and change the tolerance. Now the tolerance is the percentage of the range of what you're selecting. And if we push that up to say, let's try about 40. Now that might be too much, but we'll see. And don't forget you can use your up and down arrow keys because I never can hit the number I want to tell you. And let's go ahead and come back down again. Now we've increased it by what, 10%. And we are getting some more but we are still stuck in a sense with that color that we selected down here. And the only way to make it more is to either resample or to change the tolerance. And you can get the tolerance so large that it's not gonna work. So in my opinion, probably the best way to do this would be to use this one sample continuously. Come over here and let's go ahead and start again real quick here because I wanna show you one more trick. And we'll leave the tolerance at 42. That should be all right. Keep the plus sign inside the area that you want to change, the reds. Don't take the plus sign out of that area, and you're going to be fine. You could even use a bigger brush if you wanted to. It really is not going to impact things. That one, to me, is the most logical, and it works the best. You can let go of your mouse anytime you want to and start all over again. Just keep that plus sign where you want the color to change. Because if I go outside with the plus sign, it will be more than glad to change that background and just about anything else. Let's see if we can get this done again real quick. Just want to show you one more little trick I've got for this tool. Obviously, the color of the bird can be anything you want them to be. Or her, I'm not sure. I think that is a him. I have heard that birds are in the males are more colorful than the females, so that's probably a male. Let's go ahead and get just on this edge right here. And up here just a little bit more in that kind of like whatever that is up there, that main. Okay, I don't really want them quite that aggressive. Let me show you a trick real quick before we end this one. Create a new layer. Come over here and pick up your history brush. I love the history brush. And come over here with the history brush. And what I'm going to do is make that brush bigger. And what I'm doing literally is painting the bird back in. Remember, one of the things about the history brush, we talked about this already in another lesson, is that it will paint back the original image. That's one of the things it does. So I do have actually the image of the bird in a separate layer. Now, select that layer and go to Opacity and lower the opacity. I mean, what do you want the bird's color to be? 
It could be a combination of the red of the original bird and the cyan that we chose to fix them with using the color replacement tool to make it happen, an additional layer, the history brush, and opacity. Pretty cool. On to the next.